Hey friends, good morning and welcome to Prophetic Edge. And um, I've made my um, voice clear in regard um, of what's happening in Israel, between Israel and the Hamas group. I want you to understand this and I want you to know this. Groups like Hamas, ISIS, Hezbollah are terrorist group. They are terrorist group that is causing terror in the region of um, Israel. And, uh, and we really need to understand that, that they are motivated by hatred and um, bitterness against uh, Israel. Their idea, their ideology that I think is quite demonic and quite concerning is to eradicate Israel totally. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about the invasion that happened last Saturday, how they invaded the borders of um, Israel, you know, and uh, how they came in, um, you know, through, um, through the air, um, through the sea and the land, how they invaded and um, went into Israel and destroyed many lives, you know, children, uh, babies, uh, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters. They took uh, many hostages back into Gaza. And I want you to understand, this is what I want you to understand, is that the fight that, that is happening right now is actually motivated by um, the wicked ones, the ones who are filled with hatred for a race. And um, this is a religious war, if you want to put it this way. This is a war between Israel and Hamas. Um, Hamas doesn't care for Palestinian people. They do not care for Palestinian lives. They only care about their agenda and their, um, you know, cause. And we have seen it in the past how um, the likes of Hamas, ISIS, Hezbollah has actually taken people Hostages, hostages and massacred people and they actually showed it on YouTube uh, videos and um, this is um, this is a terrorist group that are using Palestinian lives for human shield now I've just posted a video by Robbie Dawkins who works in Afghanistan who works in the Islamic nations uh, to bring the awareness of Christ and to bring the awareness of the gospel to the Muslim people. I want you to understand that, that God loves the world. And that is clear throughout the scripture that God's will is not for anyone to perish, but, ev but everyone to come into a place of repentance, into a place of changing their minds about God. And, um, you know, Hamas will use uh, civilians to, uh, as, as their shield to protect themselves and then blame it on Israel. Friends, what's happening in Israel and what's happening in Gaza at the moment is very disturbing, is very concerning. We know that more than 1,400 people died in Israel and also in, Palestine, in, uh, in Gaza at the moment. There are so many lives that have been lost, 1,200, 1,300 lives that has been lost during this attack. And of course, the Prime Minister of Israel has declared war um, you know, on Hamas, right? On Hamas. He has not declared war on the Palestinian people, but on Hamas itself. And of course, Hamas is very cunning in their planning. If you read Psalm, um, Psalm 64, you will find out how cunning their plans are. Now, this is a psalm that uh, I've been uh, meditating on since about two weeks ago. And uh, I've been thinking about this psalm and I can see similarities in this psalm. This is a psalm that David actually gave to the director of music um, to, uh, 
to sing this psalm. And in this psalm, David is being pursued by his enemy, relentlessly pursued by his enemy. His enemy wants to harm him. His enemy wants to destroy his life. And so they're coming after him. David goes before God and he pours out his heart to God and he actually you know, writes this psalm and, um, and, and he says to God, hear my voice, O God, in my meditation, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. He's not even asking God to preserve his life from the enemy, but from the fear of the enemy. There's a spirit of fear that has been released over the earth right now, over Israel and over the earth, over the Western world right now even, there's a spirit of fear that is being unleashed. Now, we know according to the word of God that we have not received a spirit of fear, but we have received a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind, right? So it's different. The spirit of fear will actually paralyze you like they did. They went in. The Hamas people went in and destroyed uh, Israelis' Um, lives. And this is what um, what uh, David says here. He says, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, these people are workers of iniquity who sharpen their tongue like a sword. We saw it in the Iranian parliament. We saw how the Iranian parliament sharpened their tongues against Israel. They actually shouted death to Israel. We saw it on the streets of Sydney here in Australia where uh, the uh, the Islamic cleric uh, was in elation of what had happened to the Israeli people when Hamas invaded Israel. He was in jubilation, in elation. He was happy about what was going on. And we saw on the street of Sydney even where they were chanting gas the Jews or death to the Jews. These are bitter words as um, New King James Version actually says. It says, and bend their bows sh to shoot their arrows, their bitter words. So bitter words has been released over Israel. And so we need to counter that with better words, with God's word, with the words that actually releases the presence, the power, and the glory of God over Israel and over the people in Gaza even now, that the grace of God, the mercy of God will be released during that time, right? And the Bible says this here in verse 4, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. We saw that. We saw how they, how Hamas actually shot at the blameless in this festival where many um, people who were actually partaking in a celebration, in a concert, their innocent lives were destroyed during that day. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. There was no fear on the face of the people that invaded Israel. No fear whatsoever. They were chanting, they were videoing, they left bodies on the streets of Israel, and they encouraged themselves in an evil matter. Friends, these this attack was well planned, was well calculated, right? It was very cunning. Even the Bible says here in Psalm 64, they encourage themselves in evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly and they say to themselves, who will see them? Who will see them? The device iniquities, we have perfected a shrewd scheme, both the inward thought of the heart of men are deep. This is David's um, summary here. He's saying that uh, both the inward thought of the heart of men are deep. They deep, um, they deep in um, wickedness, in iniquity, in vengeance, in bitterness, in in murder. Jesus says this very clearly that you know that uh, the inward man, the wicked man, what he has is evil thoughts, is murder and lewdness and fornication and immorality. So we can see the wicked heart of Hamas during that time. Friends, let me tell you, there's enough evidence on YouTube from the Hamas leader who says that he wants to eradicate Israel. There's enough evidence of ex 
Hamas people that are coming forward and and um, exposing what Hamas is all about. Hamas doesn't care about the Palestinian people. I want you to know that, just like Robbie says, they don't care about human life, right? You know, contrary to what the gospel actually tells us, contrary to what the word of God tells us. The word of God tells us that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, Peter tells us it is not God's will for anyone to perish, but for everyone to come into repentance. We need to see, you know, uh, Holy Spirit releasing conviction on the wicked heart of the Hamas group leader and the people that are joining with Hamas right now. We know that Iran is Iran is actually siding with Hamas and many other, um, you know, Islamic. Um, nation are, are actually gathering intelligence. The, the Hezbollah is getting involved and um, Iranian are actually warning that, uh, you know, this war can become bigger and bigger. And we know that Prime Minister, uh, the Prime Minister of Israel has actually gone into attack, is declared war because he wants to eradicate, he wants to get rid of Hamas in that region so that people can live in peace. I don't think the heart of the Prime Minister to, is to eradicate the Palestinian people, but Hamas, he wants Hamas out, is actually giving warnings to the people, to the Palestinian people to move out. But unfortunately, Hamas is actually stopping them from moving out. They're using the Palestinian people as human shield. This is very sad. This is very concerning. My heart goes out to the people that are, that are, that are dying to children that are being stuck under rubbles, people that are losing their lives in this war. Friends, as we know, Jesus actually predict, predicted that in Matthew chapter 24. And, and we keep seeing this happening over and over again. And we know some of these words as that have actually come to pass. But nevertheless, we are still at war. Remember, we are not fighting against flesh and blood here. We are fighting against principalities and powers that resides in the heavenly places, the wicked forces. They, they put ideas of evil in the hearts of men, those Hamas people, ISIS and Hezbollah. They are driven by hate. They've got such a hate. They were trained at the age of five to hate Israel. And that's what we're seeing right now. We cannot be blinded by what's going on right now, right? We need to, to stand in the gap and pray for Israel and for the Palestinian people in Gaza at the moment. But we want to see Hamas being driven out of that region. We want to see God's kingdom be established. We, this is my prayer. My prayer is that, you know, Holy Spirit will reveal Christ to um, this Hamas group, that they will encounter Jesus, that God will actually release angels over that region, that they will be arrested by the presence of God, by the mighty presence of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our God and our King, that God will actually release angelic hosts over this region right now in Jesus' name. I pray for Holy Spirit to give wisdom to the Israelis that they'll be able to target the Hamas people and get them out of that region. Friends, Israel wants to live at peace with the Palestinian people on Gaza. Right, this is my opinion, this is my uh, my rent, and uh, and I do believe that we need to see the kingdom of God at this end. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. I was saying, you know, how do we pray in this situation? How do we pray? People are getting murdered. People are getting hurt. People are dying in Palestine. Children are dying. You know, how do we pray? in the situation. I would invite you to pray in the spirit. Last night, you know, Milan and I prayed for, for Israel. We prayed for the Palestinian people in Gaza. And, uh, you know, we need to pray for, for Christ to be revealed 
to those people. We want to see the kingdom of God. We want to see the gospel being preached and Christ being revealed to them. Amen. This is what Jesus says here in regards to the signs of the times and the end of the age, right? Um, in verse 3, chapter 24, verse 3, this is what um, it says here. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, um, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying that I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All these are the beginning of sorrows. We are seeing earthquake in Afghanistan right now. 2,400 people died in that earthquake. We are seeing the earth being shaken at the moment, right? And, um, and I want to read something else to you that Paul, Paul talks about godlessness in the last days. And this is what he says. Paul says this, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now listen to this, having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who worm their way into homes, gain control over the weak willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to acknowledge the truth. And friends, we understand that Paul was talking um, to the Christians here in, um, you know, in this region and telling them what the last days is. Are we living in a different time? Are we not seeing what is going on in our world right now? Are we not seeing what is going on in our world right now? Friends, we need to pray that the kingdom of God be established and we are children of light. We are sons of light. We are daughters of light. And, and, and the gospel is very different to what Hamas, Hezbollah and ISIS are preaching, to what the Islamic cleric are actually preaching right now. You do not rejoice. I don't care who you are. You do not rejoice in the death of innocent people. God does not rejoice in the death of the wicked. You go and read your Bible. God does not rejoice in the death of the wicked. You know, God does not rejoice in it. We cannot take part in rejoicing when people are dying, when children are being beheaded, when, when, when grandmothers and grandfathers are being taken hostage, where young people are being massacred, you know, in, in, in this terror of Hamas. We cannot be silent on the situation. We need to stand and we need to stand in the gap for Israel and we need to stand in the gap for the Palestinian people who are suffering right now. Amen. And friends, we need to pray. We need to ask the Father to intervene. We need to ask for the mercy of God. We need to ask for Holy Spirit to awaken the hearts of men. We need to pray for people to come to know Christ during that time. Friends, this is my stand on the situation that is going on in Israel right now. 
and uh, and friends i want to invite you to keep praying for that situation you know like the bible says let god arise and all his enemies be scattered all right uh, psalm 68 this is what it says here i want to read it to you let god arise let all his enemies be scattered these enemies are the hamas the Hezbollah, the ISIS, the terrorists, right? Let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered. Let those who also who hate him flee before him as smoke is driven away. So drive them away. I, I pray right now that God will actually drive away the Hamas terrorist group in that area. That God will drive them away. Amen. As wax melt before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them re rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Not in the death of the wicked, right? But God, you know, God asks us to rejoice before him and, and to sing to God, sing praises unto him extol him who rides on the cloud by his name yah and rejoice before him because he is a father of the fatherless a defender of widow is god in his holy habitation god sets the solitary in families he brings out those who are bound um into prosperity but the rebellious dwell in a dry land oh god when you went out before your people when you march through the wilderness the earth shook I, I just pray this is my prayer that that the earth will shake under the power of the holy spirit the heavens also dropped rain at the presence of god right we saw how god came onto mount sinai the power the majesty of god and i pray that the enemies of god will actually be driven out now remember like i said before i want to read this passage of scripture and i'll finish with it ephesians chapter 6 I want to read this to you and help you understand this, right? This is what the Bible says here. Uh, Paul says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, right? Not in our own power, but in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the wiles of the enemy. The enemy is God's schemes. We are not ignorant of his schemes, right? He works through the wicked hearts. He puts evil intent evil thoughts into people's mind and people are driven by those thoughts and 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 they actually manifest themselves right and it says here you know uh put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenlies the bible tells us therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having girded your waist with truth remember that remember that with truth you know paul says fix your thoughts on what is true on what is noble amen having put on the breastplate of righteousness this is the righteousness of god of who you are this is your identity your righteousness the righteousness of god and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one amen and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints and even in palestinian palace um palestinian right now palestine right now 
um, you know, in, in Jerusalem, there are Palestinian uh, Christians, and we need to pray for these people. We need to ask God, pray for the saints, right? Because I know I saw a clip on, 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 on YouTube, you know, about the Christians in, uh, in that region. We need to pray for them. And, um, and this is what I'm saying, friends. What I'm saying to you, this is not a, fle a war against flesh and blood. There are demonic powers that are actually instigating that war. There are demons that are working through people to bring about distractions to humanity. I want you to remember this, right? God loves the world. He loves the Palestinian people and he loves the Israelis. He loves the world. That's why he gave his son, right? Hamas doesn't care about people. They don't even care about their own lives. They'll put their own lives at risk. They, they do not care about people. I can't, you know, emphasize that enough. I want you to pray. I want you to see God. I want you to stand firm in your faith. Western world, we need to wake up. We need to wake up and we need to get back and connect with God again. The urgency of that prophetic word I had the other day. We need to get back to fellowship. We need to get back to coming together and worshiping together and gathering together and encouraging one another. The Bible says to us that we need to encourage one another. Friends, bless you. I hope that has blessed you and I hope that has encouraged you to understand a little bit where I'm coming from. Like I said, this is my rant, this is my, my opinion and this is how I see things right now. What I do want to see, I want to see people being impacted by the life of Jesus that their hearts will be transformed. Their hearts, their wicked hearts, will be transformed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.